Hi guys, Angie Bell with my fairy treasures. Okay, you guys, I'm back. Sorry, it's been a couple of days since I gotten back and wanted to get back quicker. I felt a little bit not good. I I don't want to freak anyone out. I did not have the coronavirus. It was my you know my monthly thing. So um, that's why I just was not able to film. I didn't have the energy, but I'm good now. Okay, so what I'm showing you guys here is the skirt for the um for the dress form. See that right there? There's the top of it, right? And this, I showed you that it ties on in the back. So anyway, that's the dress form. What I have here, this is all the stuff on this dress form is not attached. I mean, for the skirt, it's not attached. We have to attach all this. But I want to go over how I got to the base. I want to show you how I did the base part of it. And then we'll attach all this together, okay? So all this is going to come off right now. So let's, you watch me take it off. And the thing that I don't like is, um, my other phone is not charged. So, um, I usually take a picture so I kind of know how I have things. So I'll just have to remember, but I will take things off and put them to the sides where they go. So at least I know this stuff goes to this side. Okay. So. Let's hope that I can remember to the best of my ability where things go, but we'll work it out the best we can. Okay, that goes over here. Just a second. This And it's a lot of little pieces, it's a lot of little stuff. Okay. And the cardboard will go over here. Okay, so the base of this um, the skirt, and we're also going to go over the dress form in just a second. But what I did is, I can show you on the back. This is the back right here. On the back, and the reason I have these safety pins, this is where I know not to go past because that's the back. Because I'm not going to decorate the back. I'm not going to decorate the back with stuff just because it's the back. <coughs> um, what I did is I took this right here. It looks like muslin. It's actually the stuff that you get at Halloween time from Dollar Tree that you can put all around the place to make everything look real spooky. But it looks like cheesecloth, doesn't it? But it's even better than cheesecloth. I mean, look at it. It's just, ugh, I love it. So I took pieces of this. So I would take my hot glue gun, my nasty hot glue gun, and I would just in sections go like this. Okay. And then I would take a piece of this cheesecloth. I cut a piece of this cheesecloth off and I would lay it down. And I just kept doing that all over the place. Okay, then after I did all that, then, oh, also I took some doilies. Like, see this doily right here? And then this doily here? I attached doilies everywhere. After I did that, then I took my uh, Tea Dye Distress. It's Distress Spray by Tim Holtz. It's the Tea Dye. I took that. I took some Vintage Photo distress stain in the bottle so I took these two different ones I just took stuff I had and also I used this these I put this I put on with a brush dapped a brush like a wet brush I put some on, the, on my little glass mat here dipped a wet brush in it and just dabbed it on with a brush and then sprayed it with water and let it drizzle down this already has a dabber so I would just dab it on here like this wherever spray it with water and let it drizzle down and this is a spray, so it just easily sprayed. I just didn't have sprays of all the colors I wanted, so I used what I had. If you don't have sprays, you can use acrylic paint and do the same thing that I did. So that's how I accomplished that. Um, oh, as far as making this skirt, let me talk about this. I use a yard of fabric, and then, so a yard of fabric, measure out a yard of fabric. And I used, these are actually, this was a sheet. This is some old sheets of mine. And that's what I used. Um, you can use whatever fabric you want, like a poly cotton or yeah, you can do you can do a poly cotton or a pure cotton, whatever you want to do. Um, so you do a sh you do your fabric or a sheet or whatever a, a yard long. Now, as far as your length, that depends on the mannequin you're working on. So on this one, I did um, about twelve. Let me see, because I added on I added on this lace down here. Let me do it from the lace, or from the end of it. 
so about 12 inches long is what I did. And then you guys can see that I also added on with three layers of lace. Okay. One, two, and three. Which I think just looks so beautiful. And then I grunged it up the same way I did how I grunged up everything else. Just grunge, grunge, grunge on the lace. And I even took some of that, um, that muslin looking stuff, which is like more like spooky cloth, I think it's called. And I made sure some went over the lace parts too, to get it more grunged up. I wanted it very shabby and very grungy, but still very pretty. And so you can see here on the front, I did, I did that background, like I told you with this stuff, with this kind of cloth. And then, um, I put, uh, oh, I used the doilies. There's a doily, there's a doily, 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 bigger doilies here, smaller doilies. And then I also used some, um, burlap, little pieces of burlap. Like that's burlap right there. <clears throat> so I took pieces of burlap. Like I, I keep all this just in buckets on my shelf of just pieces of burlap. And I just cut them off, made it really, really messy glued that on top of there. I put another burlap here, burlap here, burlap here, burlap here, burlap here, and then put a doily on top of the burlap and then did the sprays. Okay. So that's how this was all accomplished. Um, the other thing is I did a, I told you this in the first video, I did a running stitch at the top. Okay. So you guys can see, I did a running stitch at the top and at the beginning and at the end, leave yourself long string. So this is so you can tie it on. Okay, so all you're doing is just doing a running stitch all the way around at the top. See that? And then it gathers it up nice and everything. And look how nice and grungy I made that. Isn't that fabulous, you guys? And that's just done with these three things to grunge it up. Again, Distress Spray Tea Dye. Um, I want these Distress Sprays, all the colors. I mean, all the, you know, the browns and all those colors for sure. I got to see. I, I don't think I have all the colors. I need to get all of them. Cause I really like this stuff. Um, distress stain in the dauber and then the dark, dark brown cocoa. Like I would love to have all distress stains with these two different, all in these two different colors, which this isn't even, this is a, uh, this is a uh, Jane Davenport and this is Jane Davenport's hot cocoa. Okay. Anyway, Love that. You can get that same whole same effect using acrylic, watered down acrylic paint too. Okay. Um, so the other thing I want to show you guys is how this turned out. Okay. So I went ahead and I took, gessoed this, went ahead and gessoed this. Um, cause we left off when I used this, right? I glued this all over. Remember that was the last step. There's other steps before that, but this is the last step. So you guys saw it looking like that. Well, I took gesso, put gesso all over it. Then again, used my three colors and just grunged it out with these three colors again. Okay. And then, um, so you can see how that turned out. Isn't that cool? So I want the blouse to look like it's just a very old ripped fitted blouse, fitted blouse, I guess you say. And also I took some Inca gold and I'm trying to find it. Here it is. I took some Inca gold and rubbed that on it too in gold and just rub that on it. So you can, I don't know if you guys can see it. There's little sections everywhere where there's gold highlights everywhere. Okay. So now I have the back to do still. Okay, and I'm going to do this on camera, do the back. We're not going to do that first. We're going to glue all the stuff onto the skirt first. But I'm going to use these three colors again. And we'll do the back and I'll show you how I drizzle all that on there. So you guys can see me do that. Okay. Make sure this camera's going. Yeah, it is. Okay, good. All right. So. And I think what I want to do, and I think this is what I'm going to do, I want to add like a little necklace, like a little pendant necklace on here. So I think that's where I'm going to put this, like right there. That looks cool, doesn't it? I like that. Okay. <clears throat> let's move this out of the way for now. And let's work on the skirt. Just, just a second, I'm putting this away. <clears throat> All right, so 
Let me bring this up right like this so you can let me see how much you're seeing. Okay, we need to bring this up like this so you can see. Okay, just making sure of what you guys are seeing. <clears throat> All right. And hopefully I can remember what the heck, where everything went, because there was a lot of stuff on here. Just as long as I can basically remember where everything was going. Okay. So, the first thing I did was I put down this cardboard, these cardboard pieces. So this is all goes down here. Okay. I put these cardboard pieces down something like this. Doesn't have to be exact. Now, this is the other thing I want to discuss. We're using fabric, metal pieces, <clears throat> flowers, all kinds of stuff. If you're using, if your base is fabric, you can use hot glue all day long because I don't care if you use metal onto fabric. It's going to, have you ever tried to, you ever try to pull something apart on your, on fabric with hot glue? It ain't coming off. The hot glue ain't coming off and whatever you glue it on there ain't coming off. So you're free to use the hot glue gun when you're doing anything to fabric. All right. So we're going to glue this down. I was so inspired when I saw Prima at the, um, I want to call it CHA show, but it wasn't, C it's not called CHA anymore, Creativations. And if you don't know what that is, is Creativations is like a, um, it's like a show so that all the buyers can go and see what the new products are. So they set up these beautiful booths. You can look up um, Creativations on YouTube and see all the videos. A lot of the people who go um, tape the show and show what the new stuff is. And they demo. And it's so cool. Tim Holtz is there. Diane Reevely's there. All the big names are there. It's really, really cool. And yes, would I love to go sometime? Uh, yes. I sure would. <coughs> yes, ma'am. I would love to go. Oh, I'd be in heaven. Okay. I want to make another one of these. Um, and I want to um, do it in purples. Shades of purple and magenta. I think that would be fabulous. So, because I have another one ready to go. I did two of them at one time. So I got the lace at the bottom. I already have it already all gathered up. So this one will be in purple when we work on that one. Okay, so we got these pieces down. Let me look and see what you guys are seeing. Perfect. <clears throat> so we got this down where we want it. Now let's get flowers going. These flowers are made are prima flowers that are just in a container like this big, and you put the flowers together yourself. So I used a lot of Tim Holtz Distress inks, um, Diane Reevely's inks, whatever I want to use, acrylic paints, and colored them all up. <clears throat> a lot, and oh, also Tim Holtz um, Distress inks. And then they're also, um, like right here, Prima also makes um, paper ones like this. So it was a whole thing of paper ones that I used the Tim Holtz Distressed inks and created these ones. So. <clears throat> okay, one of them close together, but if we have little areas open, perfect, because we're going to put things there. Okay. Okay, so we kind of got the flowers where we want them. Kind of organized in a disheveled way. And I hope I'm not working too far away, but this is a really big skirt. So I want you guys to be able to see what I'm doing. So 
we're gonna have to work wide so hopefully you guys I think you guys are seeing close enough I'm not doing detailed work so like when I'm coloring or drawing or something like that of course I would come in a lot closer but um, we're working big so I think the wide view is going to be a lot more beneficial than being up super close we'll do close-ups of course at the end so you can see just everything close up <clears throat> And especially work like this, you want instant instant adhesion. That's going to be the key. So, <coughs> so how's everybody doing out there? These are stressful times. I know that. I'm stressed too. But um, when I'm stressed, I like to create. And I've always been like that. And I know some people some people have been like, I'm not creating right now because I'm stressed. But everyone you know, deals with this stress on their, in their own way. So one lady said, I'm cleaning. I'm not crafting. So that makes her feel better. So I guess do whatever makes you feel better. But if crafting does make you feel better, or do you just watching me makes you feel better, and you don't feel like crafting, but you feel like watching, that's fine. But for those of you who feel like crafting your way through this stressful mess we're in, um, I hope to just you know give you guys ideas, be of some inspiration, and uh, get through this. Oh Lord, it's crazy, absolutely crazy. All right. So next, I want to put this butterfly in, I think, right here. This is a butterfly from Dollar Tree. Aren't they gorgeous? This one's from Dollar Tree, and so is this one. Look how beautiful those are. Yes, ma'am. I seen those butterflies. I was like, oh, I didn't know what. It doesn't matter what you're going to use them on. That's the kind of stuff that you just go, I'm getting it right now, because you know you're going to be using that. I mean, if you're a crafter, you know you're going to be using it. I'm going to show you guys something. You guys want to see something yummy? I'll show it. I'll share something with you. I have boxes like this all over my craft room. Look at this. This is just a box full of goodies. Look at all this. All these metal pieces. All this. This. This is just... Some people think this is junk. To me, this is treasure. Just treasure. absolute treasure. Let me show you something else. Look at all these jewelry bits too. Love it. I just think it's just, this is in there, a feather, these beads, some of these. I just think, you know what, I might use a couple of those. Let's just grab those. That's just, to do this type of work I'm doing right now, that's the kind of stuff you want to have in your stash. Just the coolest, some people call that junk, but I call them little treasures. So just pick, whenever you see a little treasure, when you're at a thrift store, the dollar store, wherever you're at, always be looking for these little treasures that you can combine together to do um, work like this. <clears throat> Fender Bar inspired, or I like to say salvaged art. And I like to call it salvaged art. That's what I really like calling it. But people know Finnebar inspired. So, but in this video, I'm going to start calling it salvaged art. And the reason I call that is because it's salvaged. You're getting it from everywhere. Thrift stores, dollar stores, your own little stash that you've had forever, your own jewelry box. You're gathering up stuff from everywhere. So, otherwise, so that's all salvage, right? This is the kind of stuff a lot of people, if they saw a box of it, they just throw in the garbage. Not me. These are little treasures to me. Some people be like, oh, that's junk. No, it's not. Be like, that's a box full of goodness right there. <clears throat> Okay, so I'm putting these beautiful butterflies. Can you believe? Now, I haven't seen this one I just recently got at the Dollar Tree not too long ago. 
these right here, aren't they gorgeous? They even have like the peacock looking feather on them. Those I have not seen for quite a while. I got those maybe a couple years ago. So fabulous. Okay. Um, <coughs> excuse my little cough. I am. I, I don't even really have a cough. I don't even know why I'm coughing. All right, I'm just gonna be really honest with you. Have you guys ever, have you guys noticed like you just kind of stressed out about this coronavirus? <laughs> so you'd be like, do I have a sore throat? Do I have this? Do I have that? Me and my husband will ask each other that. It, it, and you feel fine. It's just like your mind starts playing tricks on you. Like I'll just start coughing and I really don't have a cough, but anyway, this crap, this, this is just, it's just craziness. I'm gonna put this down here at the bottom because I just think it looks fabulous down here. And it's just little pieces. It's not like it's going all the way across. Not even evenly. I'm just throwing it on. Just because I think that looks cool. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. You want everything. For this. The whole goal of this is very ripped, torn, tattered. Um, pretty steampunky looking, in my opinion. And I love it. Okay, now I think I want this to go here. Is that what I wanted? How did I have it before? Oh wait, I think I had, <clears throat> I think I had this here. And, or did I have it like this? <gasps> I can't remember. But you know what? I think I did have it like that. Yeah. You guys, you know what? I'm not gonna even worry about having exactly how I had it before. Lord only knows. Okay, this piece is going to be really heavy. So I'm going to, I'm just going to place this here. I want to use, well, you know what, for now, I'll just go ahead and do it. What I really, I don't have my E6000 sitting in front of me for some reason. So I would, I would, on a piece that has some weight to it, I would actually put um, E6000 in the middle and then hot glue on the outside so you get the instant adhesion and then you get the E6000. For now, just to get it stuck down, I'll use the hot glue um, and we'll see how it works. If it, and if it doesn't stay real well, then of course I'll E6000 it. But when something has some weight to it, it's not because I don't think this will stick. I know it will. It can be glued down. It's the weight of it. It's a little bit hefty. But we'll see how it does. And if it wants to come off, no major. Let it come off and then do what I said. Maybe do the um, E6000 on the outside. And on the inside, do the hot glue for instant adhesion. Okay. All right. What else are we doing? Okay, I remember this goes here. Look how fabulous this is. It says, um, I got this last year at the 75% off at Hobby Lobby. You're never too old for a fairy tale. Isn't that fabulous? Oh, I just love that. Absolutely love that. So that's going to go right here. Look at the base I have. It's a little doily. So that's fabulous. I have quite a few of these. Um, I think I bought like five of them because they were I them for like 99 cents. They're normally like three or four dollars. So that was a great deal. Do I have enough glue on the where it belongs? No, I don't. Just a second. Okay, there we go. Yep. No, it's down. Because um, I want to make a pendant out of that, out of one of those. So, But I have a bunch of them, so. We're good. Um, all right, let's do this. I want to put, let me fluff up these flowers a little bit, kind of smash down, get the fluff back on them a little bit. a minute flipping up these flowers a little bit okay all right so I want to put just a second let's see 
Okay, I have these little um, wooden spools. So let's put these in here. I'm going to put the wooden spools in the center of the flowers. I think. Yeah. Hopefully that stays. Yeah, that's staying good. Okay, so I want to do that in a couple of different flowers. <clears throat> these are the wooden spools I'm talking about. Aren't they cute? Lord only knows where I got these. I've had them in my stash for a long time. They might be Tim Holtz. I might have got, I'm not for sure, but I feel like these are Tim Holtz. I think. I don't know. But I picked up quite a few of them. I picked up a lot of bags of them, though. Might have even been a thrift store. I don't know. That's one way you can tell you've been crafting a long time if you're like, I don't even know where I got this. You know what? Let's put that here. Another spool goes in here. And then I want to put some of these little metal thumbnail, um, thumbnails, um, thimbles. These are so cool. Aren't those fabulous? You guys, I picked these up for a buck a piece. I mean, yeah, a buck a piece. A buck for a pack of them. You got like eight in a pack from one of the local dollar stores here. And I knew I would use these in projects. So I picked up like five packs of them. Because I was like, that is so Tim Holtz. And I don't even know at the time Tim Holtz was selling them. And now, right now, I think he carries these in a pack. Thimbles. So, I was ahead of my time. <laughs> I bought them like, I don't know, couple years ago at this one local dollar store we have and uh I seen those I was like yes ma'am like yes please so I'm gonna put these little thimbles all in the middle of these flowers and also these um spools <clears throat> I love a spool Love me a spool. I think they're just fabulous. Let me look at the time. Okay, you guys, in just, let's see. Is that 27? Yeah, in just about three or four minutes, uh, the video's going to go to part uh, the next part. So <coughs> when it cuts off, just go to the next part. I try to give you a little forewarning before that happens. I try. All right, you know what? Let's just get all these pieces together. Just a second, you guys. I don't want to lose pieces. <clears throat> all right. All right, and then let's glue this down in the center. Again, I would e six. I would do e six thousand in the middle and glue on the outside, or the other way around, whichever. Because this is a, has a little bit of weight to it, but um, we'll see if it stays on really well. I it'll probably stay on just fine. Just when pieces are a little heavier, I like to kind of double do it with the e six thousand and the hot glue. I think we're going to be fine. This piece is gorgeous. I got this piece at a another local dollar store here, like a local generic dollar store. And they had these. And um, that store, whenever they have cool stuff like this, it goes. So I bought like all they had. They had like five or six of these necklaces. This was this was a necklace. I, um, I just immediately, I just took all five. They had a bunch of jewelry like that, like really cool jewelry. And of course it was a dollar. So I just cleaned them out. I walked up there with all of it. She was like, oh, I guess you like that. I go, I love it. <laughs> Here's another thimble. I think she thought I was going to, um, if she heard I was going to rip it apart, she probably would have cried. So I acted just like, oh, yeah, I love all this. I do love all this, but I'm not going to, it's getting ripped up. Okay. In fact, I wanted to make another, use this and make a necklace for myself. My own necklace out of one of these, which I will do someday. Okay, continuing on. <clears throat> oh, that looks cool. Put that there. This is a um, wine stopper. I have a whole bunch of these. Got them at a thrift store a long time ago. I have a ton of wine stoppers. Love them. 
Let's put another one like that there. Love me a wine stopper. I love to just take a gl uh, glass vase and just fill it with wine stoppers. I have that in a lot of places. So using that like as a vase filler looks fabulous. I've done that in my house. Love these big buttons. Let me show you guys up close. Look at these. I don't know where I got these. I got them a while back. I got quite a few of them. They're in my stash. Love them. So what are we going to do with them? I'm going to put one there. And I've had them for years, and I never used them because I could never find anything that I would add this, these big wooden buttons, and I'm like, ooh, that doesn't look good. Oh, I don't like that. That doesn't look good. And then for this project, I was like, oh, this is the project. So when you do this type of work, I hate to say this because it's kind of... You cannot be into like Kamari, that whole Kamari thing, and do this kind of work. Because you need to collect this type of stuff so that you can do things like this. You need a lot of it, and you need all different types of things in your stash. So, But if you do a Kamari, I wouldn't throw this kind of stuff away. I mean, what would you decide to throw away? I mean, this thimble is as different as these big buttons, kind of, but not really. So what I say is organize it so you know where to find it you can bring all your stuff to your area and you can do your do your um salvage dart creating i think that kamari is great in certain aspects of your life for sure i've done i haven't done kamari but i've done some which is just going through your stuff and throwing your crap away and keeping what only things you love that's the kamari method um but when it comes to my crafting stuff, absolutely not. I mean, I, I think you can go through your Kamari stuff. Or you can go through your craft stuff. And things that you just know is not your style anymore, get rid of it. But when you're doing salvage art like this, you need to collect this type of stuff. And have a little stock, nice stockpile of it that you can go to and put things together. That Kamari lady would probably be rolling over in her grave. She heard me right now. <laughs> but she's alive, so she's not rolling over in her grave. But <laughs> She'd just be shaking her head like, girl, you just told people to not throw crap away. <laughs> sure did. Well, her thing is, keep what... Um, that basically makes your heart sing. Well, I'm sorry. A box full of junk makes my heart sing. So that can't get thrown away. Okay. You guys listen to me. I'm just gabbing on and on. Okay, let me just move that up a little bit. Make sure you guys are seeing everything. Okay. 